Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Ripple CEO reacts to XRP sell-off. Says bullish trends emerging for crypto ecosystem at large. That's the title of an article from Daily Hoddle. Very much looking forward to running through this with you and sharing some good old-fashioned Moon Lambo opinions and insight. I've also got a couple tweets from the XRP community. I've got... A video clip, uh, I'm not going to run through it on my channel, I just don't do that type of thing, but I watched it, it was uh, close to a minute long, it was of Anthony Pompliano, he was asked at an event, after your podcast, Off the Chain Podcast, that's the podcast that Anthony Pompliano runs, noted Bitcoin maximalist, uh, co-founder of Morgan Creek Digital, after that, did you change your mind about XRP? I'll be sharing with you what he said and why it doesn't make a damn bit of sense to Moon Lambo. And I'm going to wrap up the article, the article, wrap up the video with this article titled End of XLM Inflation Makes Binance Discontinue Support for Stellar Staking. So XLM, of course, being Stellar Lumens, uh, which is typically framed by many in the world of crypto as a direct competitor to XRP, which I think is silly. But anyway, before I go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It's the good thing to do, the prudent thing to do, and your life will not be complete if you don't. So just consider that. That's my pitch. So into this first article, in a new interview, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse offers his take on XRP's performance in 2019. XRP began the year at $0.35 cents and is now at $0.29. Cents. Actually, I checked the price right before recording, and it was at 27. I guess that's not helping the case. Anyway, uh, at the time at time of publishing, uh, while Bitcoin and most of the crypto market at large are in the green for the year, yes, well, arbitrarily picking timelines, we'll do that. Uh, when asked about what he thinks about investors' concern about XRP sell-off this year, Garlinghouse told Bloomberg he's focused on the long run. And, uh, and here's a quote now: "We pay attention over the long haul." I tell the employees that I don't think about it on a three days, three weeks, or three months basis. Taking advantage of what digital assets can uh, can do to make transactions more efficient, I think, is a journey we'll be on for a decade or two. I describe it as a marathon, and we're on mile two. So I don't think about the price of XRP in the short term. And indeed, it doesn't make a damn bit of sense right now, especially if you consider the degree to which the entire crypto asset class is endlessly correlated you know depending on the coin to varying degrees but still big moves happen and uh, every coin in the asset class eventually responds right uh, many times perfectly in tandem given that's the case it just is an indication as david schwartz ripple tco has, has pointed out and i, th I think it's a, a rather salient point it's it's that it, all it indicates this is what david schwartz has stated his opinion i do agree what it indicates is that the market simply hasn't figured things out. And so that's why, to me, anytime anyone on the planet wants to point about uh, Bitcoin doing well in terms of price over an arbitrarily selected timeline uh, versus XRP not doing well over an arbitrarily selected timeline, I, I just want to just wanted like be like, no, that makes no damn sense. The market hasn't figured this out. And even if there are long periods be, you know, between... Um, um, notable correlation between the assets because indeed XRP is just about the least correlated to Bitcoin in terms of the, the top out of the top t uh, uh, ten cryptocurrencies in terms of price action. You know, it's it's still it, it, just following Bitcoin ultimately. I mean, do you not think that a Bitcoin tanks to one thousand dollars? Do you not think that that would be bad for XRP? On the flip side. If Bitcoin suddenly ramped up and hit uh, $50,000, 70000 $100,000, would XRP not respond in kind even without additional utility? Is it not, could it not be more obvious that, they, of course, as you know the answer, I know what you said to yourself there. You could not be more clear that uh, indeed the two are correlated. But anyway, uh, here's, here's more from Brad Garlinghouse. I think if we can enable XRP to be the most efficient, measured by speed of a, a, tr a transaction and cost of a transaction, more and more people will use it. I think there's going to be, uh, to continue to be, volatility in crypto broadly. The whole market moves together a little bit. And there's times when XRP has outperformed Bitcoin. There's times it's underperformed Bitcoin. But I think as you look at this as a long-term journey, I'm quite optimistic about where we see the whole market. There's a lot of bullish trends for the whole crypto ecosystem. So I'd like to say this. 
Now, I know that uh, the vast majority of individuals in the uh, XRP community agree with me that to whatever degree there is some sort of correlation, I've provided proof of that. I don't think it's strongly correlated. I've never said that, but there is indeed correlation. It's really not disputable from my perspective. But for though that tiny percentage of people that say, no, it's not correlated, I want to know what you know that Brad Garlinghouse doesn't because he said right here, the whole market moves together a little bit. That's a quote from Brad Garlinghouse. So I want to know what you know that Brad Garlinghouse doesn't. Maybe you can educate him and Moon Lambo and tell us what's going on. Tell us what we're missing there. Anyway, Garlinghouse also addresses the state of Facebook's digital asset project Libra. Despite pushback from global regulators, he says he's not counting Facebook out of the race just yet and is looking for policymakers to step up their support in blockchain and crypto assets. And here's another quote from him now. I think it's too soon to write it off, but I also think you've obviously seen a lot of the momentum shift. It came out in June with a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. Since that time, you've seen the likes of MasterCard and PayPal and others step away. Although I think a lot of that is because of the regulatory uncertainty. Um, I think Facebook took a really aggressive, arguably it was maybe a little naive, thinking they could just run into this and do this despite a lot of concerns. I think certainly the way Ripple approaches the world is we're going to work with regulators. We're going to partner with them from the earliest stages. We've done that here in Singapore. We've done that around the world. And I think that served us well in terms of building momentum across all of our customers. And I got to tell you, Facebook absolutely should have taken up uh, the page out of Ripple's playbook here and just alleviate the concerns with regulators and then maybe make your announcement. And still, I'm not convinced. Like Facebook, I think it's fair to state, was the uh, the wrong face for this type of message, given their uh, lack of trust, whether it's deserved or not. Probably not the best face for this movement. All right, next, here's a tweet from um, XRP Mommy. In 2018, Dilip Rao told us that connectivity is the first step to XRP adoption. At the beginning of this year, David Schwartz predicted that 2019 would be the year of connectivity for Ripple. With 300 Ripple Net members, it seems that things are right on track. Hoddle, don't fold. Rocket, rocket ship emoji. That's good. And here you go. Here's the quote from Dilip Rao. First, you get the banks connected. They do what they're doing today better. They like it. They build their services on it. Then they say, I want to do this in 100 countries, but I can't hold currency in 100 countries. Well, guess what? You've got XRP. And isn't that a beautiful thing? It's such a simple concept. If you can have somebody, if you have somebody that can explain it articulately, but it's just instead of the banks holding money in pre-funded accounts around the world, it's uh, other individuals, speculators, liquidity uh, liquidity providers, you know, it's exchanges, quite literally, cryptocurrency exchanges, holding that, taking that risk. And then all you do is turn in and on and off the liquidity, XRP, as you need it. Beautiful. Simple, right? And so here's a tweet from, this is from earlier in the year, this is in February. But uh, somebody named Baca tweeted, fantastic, David, thank you. Uh, to David Schwartz. So 2018 was about decentralization. What will 2019 be about? And he responded, this is February 1st of this year. David Schwartz responded, I don't have a crystal ball, but my gut is telling me connectivity. And uh, that's going to be uh, especially insightful when I get to uh, another video I'm going to be uh, making later in the day about uh, Ripple's big reveal uh, to, you know, the, on the last day, second day of, of Swell, which was uh, RippleNet Home. I will be talking about that in another video, but it's all about connectivity, and it's quite important. All right, uh, next here, I got this from Stephen Bull from The Deep. After the discussion with Brad Garlinghouse, Anthony Pompliano still has his doubts about XRP. And there there was at least one instance, because I, I, I watched the day that this podcast came out, I watched it. Uh, the, the whole thing, the, the whole hour and a half, or watched it, I listened to it. And there was at least one instance where Brad Garlinghouse was explaining how XRP is used to improve the way money moves around the world, to change the way the correspondent banking system works, completely revolutionize it, explain the use case for XRP itself. And it may have just been one real world example given, and then they moved on. And if that's the first time he ever heard it, of course it didn't sink in, of course he didn't get it. Maybe he was just nodding and saying, yes, okay. Uh, I don't, I functionally, because if, if I tell you, if you asked him, how does XRP work? He, he couldn't answer. You know how I know that? Because it's either, because he says that he's not sold on XRP. He doesn't know that it's necessarily needed. 
Uh, he said that he doesn't believe that it's uh, a wise investment as, uh, as as many speculators believe it is. Uh, he, I got But utility, does utility not matter? And here's something that I think is rich. He said this. He goes, here's the thing. Okay. He said, here's the thing. And I love this. Uh, he said that uh, any cryptocurrency could be used on this platform, right? Okay, well, a couple things there. But let's just say that we're true. It's not. But let's let's just say that it's true. Um, what's the use case for Bitcoin to be used in the place of fiat currency, right? It's the Toshi Nakamoto Envision. That's the peer-to-peer, uh, peer-to-peer cash system without any physical cash, right? You can do that with any cryptocurrency. Isn't that rich? Conceptually, what he's saying is true, of the uh, as, as far as it pertains to RippleNet's utilization of XRP, he's saying any coin can do that, but he doesn't see apparently that it's the same case with Bitcoin. So he just thinks that Bitcoin will have the same power. Why? Because it's the first cryptocurrency ever to exist. Do you really believe that? To me, that's not particularly a particularly reasonable position to have. Now, let me parse my own words as far as uh, what what uh, what cryptocurrencies can be used on RippleNet. Uh, specifically for on-demand liquidity, which utilizes XRP right now as a bridge currency. You could program, and I've made this point in the past, you can program any cryptocurrency on the planet to work with it. It's just that most cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, for example, not very well suited because uh, for, for this particular use case. We're, we're trying to um, settle in real time. You can think about how slow Bitcoin is, how costly transactions are, while Ripple's trying to reduce the, cross, uh, the cost of uh, cross-border payments and settlement, right? And so that wouldn't be very good, right? Bitcoin simply would not be, be good for that. You could plug in any other cryptocurrency. Okay. So then you could say, well, any other coin, what, say there's one that's even faster than XRP one day. Okay. Why is Ripple going to plug another coin in when they have uh, bazillions of, of XRP? Why would they ever do that? And consider this. Even if there was a coin that was marginally faster, because at this point, it's, it's at the point where you're splitting hairs. No, I, I really mean that. Let me explain why. So XRP settles in three to five seconds. What if you had a cryptocurrency that could functionally settle, was infinitely scalable, and settled in 0.1 seconds? Once XRP is in place, effectively, what problem are you really solving if instead of settling in 3 to 5 seconds, it settles in a tenth of a second? What are you really solving? How are you going to get liquidity all over the world and, and, and take over what XRP is doing? And then even if you did that, it makes it, you want to know why it's even more absurd? So XRP, yes, it settles in 3 to 5 seconds. But did you know that transactions take longer than that? Yes, even on RippleNet, and this is not some sort of dig at Ripple. That this, this is just understand the way this works is there are local rails, uh, and it's, it's, it goes back to the, the example I gave the other day about how uh, money moves around uh, it, Mexico. Their their equivalent of ACH, which is what uh, we have in the United States here, their version of ACH is much more efficient than ACH in the, the United States. That's just one example right there. And it's, we're talking about local payment rails. And unless you're going to completely rewire that somehow, I mean, that's, that's, that's insane. But, but even so, so, you know, it could, maybe it does take a minute or two or three in, using RippleNet to settle. But still, effectively, that's, that's real time. And so even if you had a faster cryptocurrency, you haven't solved the problem of local rails. And it's not that big a problem. This is, it's not a huge pain point. Ripple is taking away about 99.999% of the pain points as it pertains to speed and cost. So really, when you're talking about utilization of another cryptocurrency in place of XRP, what problem are you functionally solving and who's going to do that? It makes no damn sense and Moon Lambo knows it. All right, next here... Uh, I was going to give a shout out to Tyler McHenry here, um, who, uh, who who tagged me in this next article. And uh, just earlier today, I had this all lined up, and he's no longer on Twitter. I don't know what happened. I don't know if we need to give a like alert the authorities. Do I need to put you on a milk carton so that you can be found? That was the old timey way of finding people that were lost. Apparently, put you on a your picture on a milk carton. I could really do that because I don't really I like to put a gray circle here. That's about all I got of you as far as a picture here. But uh, I'm, I'm concerned for you, Tyler McHenry, and I hope you come home soon. But anyway, here's the article that, uh, that he sent to me. End of XLM inflation makes Binance discontinue support for stellar staking. And so, indeed, this is happening. So I'm not up to the minute on news of XLM. I follow XRP daily, intensely. So I, I, I know a lot more about that. But apparently in October, uh, something was changed. I'm going to re- read just a little bit of this. And um, this is really the only point I wanted to make. I don't even care about the staking part of it, to be honest. But uh, XLM is no longer inflationary. So anyway, the successful implementation of Protocol 12 upgrade by Stellar Foundation brought about the end of Stellar Lumens, XLMs, inflation. 
Hence, the largest crypto exchange, Binance, has disclosed that it won't be able to continue the staking of Stellar. Uh, the three core advancement proposals anticipated by Stellar Development Foundation early October was implemented at 1600 UTC on Monday, October 28th, after a vote of confidence was passed. This led to the stoppage of XLM token inflation. And so it's, it's a newer development. I just wasn't aware of it because I'm not on the cutting edge of Stellar news because that's not what the hell this channel is about. This is an XRP-centric channel, damn it. But uh, there you go. I just wanted to just, just kind of mention that real quick um, because I actually mentioned it in a fairly recent video after this had passed and somebody pointed out to me, um, actually even before Tyler McHenry, and I'm, I'm really concerned about your safety, please come back. Uh, but even before that, somebody had cited that. And I was like, oh, how about that? I didn't know that. So whoever you were, thank you very much for... Uh, for letting Moon Lambo know about that. But anyway, that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo!